I see somebody going higher in the name of Jesus. I say, I see somebody going to be used mightily by God in the name of Jesus. I see somebody's past about to be erased and the future about to be opened. I see somebody pressing towards what Baba God has for them. From glory to glory, even as they are serving God, God is going to prosper them. God is going to do what has never been done in that compound, in that household, under that father's name. What they have never seen and heard, they will hear it through your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we are going to be taking... I've preached several messages on Palm Sunday in diverse ways and manner. And today I'm going to be taking our text from the book of Mark 11, verses 1. We'll be reading down to verses 10. Interesting enough, you will notice that the story of the triumphant entry is in all the four Gospels. So that means it's a special event. It is a, 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 an event that... Really, we must take note about every gospel has the triumphant entry inside of it. Amen? In the four gospels, you will see the triumphant entry. And today we'll be taking it from the book of Mark 11, verses 1. When you are there, let me hear you say, Amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany, is it in your Bibles? At the Mount of Olives, that Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Because he knows there must be some people that must put their mouth into some things. He knows. As something wants to take place, there must be also people that the devil too will raise to want to find out what is going on with you. What is happening in your life? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? He knows it. Hallelujah. And he said to them, you know, if anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say to them, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. Tell your neighbor, the Lord needs it. Verses 4, the Bible says, they went and found a cult outside the street, tied at a doorway. And as they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that cult? And they answered, as Jesus had told them, that is why it's good to have a mentor. It's good to have, you know, people in your life that can speak into your life and tell you things to be and what is supposed to be. They said, they answered as Jesus told them to. And the people let them go. I want to believe that if they had answered the way they felt, if they have answered the way they are thinking, you know, there's some people you will send them to go and do something, they will go and be doing their own thing. And then you wonder why the results will not come. Because these things are spiritual things. The spiritual controls the physical. And every instruction that the pastor, the man of God is giving to you, you know, according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, if you take it, you'll be blessed. If you do not take it, you have yourself to blame. For some people, tomorrow. For some people, in one week. For some people, in one month. Sometimes we don't realize. That is why the Bible said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. There's going to be a freedom in this triumphant entry in the mighty name of Jesus. I said somebody will be loose and set free in this service in the mighty name of Jesus. They answered as Jesus told them to, and the people let them go. And when they brought the cult to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they could cut in the fields. And those who went ahead, and there were those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. I don't know about you, but today is a day that I'm hearing Hosanna. I don't know what you are hearing this morning. Whether you are hearing your feelings, your sentiments, your emotions. I am hearing Hosanna, Hosanna. Today all over the world. And there are people that are about to go to service. There are some depending on your, the country you are living in. But everyone today will be bringing in remembrance this event. What happened over 2,000 years ago. And I tell you, there is a Hosanna in the atmosphere. There is a Hosanna singing in our hearts. There is a Hosanna in the church today. There is a Hosanna because it's all about him. Hosanna, Hosanna in FMCI. In the highest heaven. We say blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word as you may be seated in heavenly places. The most important week in our Christian calendar is upon us. Is at hand. And today we start the journey towards Easter. And I want to look at the subject and the title which I have titled called Release of Destiny. Somebody say Release of Destiny. Say Release of Destiny. Hallelujah. You see, every child of God I've come to realize is a child of destiny. The devil does not fight ordinary people. He fights people with destiny. Can I say that again? The devil does not fight ordinary people. He fights people with destiny. Every child of God is a child of destiny. Amen? And the devil, if he is fighting people, you will know that he is fighting people who carry destiny. For he does not care about those who are not carriers of destiny. Amen? And from where we read in our Bible, in the book of Mark 11, you see that the Bible starts by telling us that Jesus was coming from a certain town and he was going to Jerusalem. And the Bible says that he was coming from a certain place, so he's coming from somewhere, and he was on his way to Jerusalem. But when he got to a city, a place, a town, when he came to Bethphage and Bethany, the Bible says at Mount of Olives, he got to this middle here now. He's coming from somewhere, he's going somewhere, he got to a particular point. What happens? The Bible says that he sent his disciples, he told two of them that they should go into the village. He's going to Jerusalem, but there was something that needed to take place before he finally arrived in Jerusalem. He says, go into the village. In this service, we are going to be going into your village. Hallelujah. I said, we are going to be visiting your village. Ah, somebody is not catching a revelation. I say, in this service, if we have to enter your village today, we will be going into your village. Wherever it is that we need to enter, we will enter it in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, we are going to somebody's village today. Get ready, get ready. Get ready. We are about to visit somebody's village. Hey, hey. This morning. Hey, hey. Get ready. If they didn't think we are coming, we are coming. Say, we are coming. Say, pastor has spoken. We are coming. We are going to the village. Hey, hey. Where it started from. We are going to the village. There are some village issues we have to settle. There are some village issues we have to put in place. There are some village things we have to take care of. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Coming from another town and going to Jerusalem, he came to Bethphage and Bethany at Mount of Olives. And he told them, kindly be seated in verses 2. He says, go to the village ahead of you. So he's coming. He's going to Jerusalem. And then at a particular point, he stops he says, go to the village ahead of you. That is a cross right there. That's a cross right there. Something is about to happen. Something is happening. Even before <laughs> Jerusalem, something is already taking place. Am I talking to somebody in this place? He says, when you get there, 
you know, as you enter it, listen to the instructions. You know, it didn't say you go too much inside it. He said, as you enter it, you are going to do what? You are going to find a cult that is tied there, which no man has ridden. Untie it and bring it here. Yes, bring that cult that was tied. Bring that thing that has been tied for too long. Untie it. Well, there are several things in this passage of scripture I want to look at. The Bible says that when they get into that village, that they are going to see a young donkey, a colt, that was tied up. First and foremost, we see that it's in an interesting place. A place, the Bible says, when he got to Bethany Bethage at the Mount of Olives, meaning that Bethage means unripe fruits. And then we also see Bethany. Or Bethany means unripe fruits. And Bethage meaning fruit that is ready for harvest. So you have in one side a place, a town, where there are two names. Bethany and there's also Bethage. Is it not so? A place that has two names. And Bethany means unripe fruit. That means there's some things that are not ripe yet. And then there's another side, on the other side, just by its side, there's another one that means ready for harvest. So this donkey was held in a place with two names. Some translations put it at a place where two crossroads meet. Where two crossroads meet. And Jesus sent them to go and release the donkey that was neither in the past and neither in the future. It was just in between. I've come to realize that that is where a lot of people are. Many are found themselves in a crossroad. That's why you see a lot of people totally confused. At the level they are that they should know what they stand for. They should know what God is doing. They should know where they are heading to. They should know that this is the hand of God. They are confused. They are neither in the past they are also neither in the future. Where God can't use neither, neither. It has to be one. Hallelujah. It has to be one. And whatever is tying somebody down, that you don't know whether you are here, whether you are there, at the age that you are today, there will be an untying in the name of Jesus. I said today there will be an untying in the name of Jesus. Even if we have to go into your village to untie some things, there must be an untying in the name of Jesus. Because we are not going to carry last in this new year. I said we are not going to carry last in this Easter. We are not going to carry last on this Palm Sunday. In the mighty name of Jesus. That is where some people have found themselves. They are neither here neither there. That is why you cannot succeed. When you don't make up your mind and you don't know, you know where you are, it will be very difficult for you to be blessed. It will be very difficult for you to remain even focused. But Jesus has need for that donkey. Somebody said Jesus has need for that donkey. He's a specialist in putting things right. He's a specialist in using even what others will not use. Amen? So we are carriers of destiny. And we must know what God is saying to us. Another thing that is interesting in, as we just said is that this donkey not only was it in a place where it's neither here neither there but it was tied it was tied amen when something is tied it cannot be usable and something could have been tied in our lives that requires a release let's never take anything for granted when you are not seeing things are progressing you know that there's something wrong somewhere Many are suffering because something is tied somewhere. Your destiny could have been tied up and requires a release. So it doesn't matter how much you pray until there's a release. Nothing is going to happen. I believe that God in this special service, he is going to release our destinies in the name of Jesus. God is going to bring a release in our businesses in the name of Jesus. He's going to bring a release to our careers in the name of Jesus. He's going to bring a release wherever a release needs to be. There will be a release in the name of Jesus. This donkey was tied. A donkey that had purpose. Imagine that Jesus will one day have a need for this donkey. Imagine that this donkey was a donkey of purpose. 
But the Bible says it was tied. It was there. Hallelujah. And nobody was using it. Nobody, you know, was even looking at it. It was just there tied at a door. What use is having a door? A door doesn't necessarily mean a wood. It means access. We are created to have access in and out. Hallelujah. That is what the Bible tells us. That he has opened before us an open door. I said it on Sunday. It's not enough to talk about a door. Yes, I have a door. You know, we don't need a door. We need an open door. A door that is closed is of no use to us. A heart that is closed is of no use to us. A mind that is closed is of no use to us. A womb that is, of, that is closed is of no use to the marriage. We need it to be opened in the name of Jesus. And whatever is closed must be open. God is not in the closed business. God is in the opening business. God is not in the tying business. God is in the untying business. And that is why I said there is something that is about to happen this morning for somebody. Because whatever it is that has tied you down for too long, there must be an untying in the name of Jesus. The cult was there tied. And a cult tied means he couldn't fulfill his destiny. Couldn't fulfill his purpose. There's nothing as bad as not being able to fulfill your purpose and your destiny. Hallelujah. A call tide means a dream that is blocked. A dream that is blocked. You can have dream, oh. you can say, yes, I've seen, I'm going to become this, I'm going to become that. If it is tied, if it is, you know, if it is locked, there's nothing that can happen. A dream locked is like a cult tied. A cult tied can mean a vision that is blocked. A cult tied can mean a blessing unacclaimed. The blessing is there, but you are not feeling it. You are not touching it. Somebody say a cult tied. Say a cult tied. Say a cult tied. A cult tied means a joy unrealized. Others are happy, you are not happy. That means you are tied. Because if, if we are in a happy place, we are in a wealthy place, we are in a place of success, we are seeing visions and dreams. We are not moved by what we see in the natural. And you, you are looking at every petty things. Everything you see in the natural is what you are moved by. That is a cult tied right there. Am I talking to somebody in this place? A cult tied is when you cannot see anything. Others are seeing you are not seeing. Hallelujah. And that is not the way it's supposed to be. A cult tied is a life without fulfillment. A cult tied is supposed is purpose that is wasted away. You have purpose, but you are wasting it away. And many a times, let me tell you, it's not anybody wasting it for many people. Many a times, it is ourselves wasting it for ourselves. Because if we do not know seasons and times that we enter into, you will waste an opportunity God wants to give you. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 29, verses 11, it says, for I know the plans that I have for you. It says the plans I have for you. When I read that scripture, I'm not looking at somebody else. The plans that he has for me, I claim it. God has a plan for me. I don't know about you. Does he have a plan for you? I said, does he have a plan for you? I said, I don't know about you, but I know Jeremiah 29 is talking to me. Is he talking to you? Is he talking to you? He says the plans that I have for you, faith, declares the Lord plans to prosper you. That is God's plan for our life and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. So we are not supposed to be tied in purpose. Our purpose should not be wasting away. That is not God's plan for us. When God wants to use us, he wants to use us so that we can prosper. He wants to use us so that we can be all that he has created us to be. And I will tell you with my own experience, I am far more than I ever thought I would be in life. Being in the perfect plan and the perfect will of God has given me far more than I even imagined or dreamed or prayed about. Hallelujah. So Jeremiah 29 is for me. Is it for you? I said, is it for you? He says, for the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, are plans to prosper you. Hallelujah. Amen. A, a, a cult that is tied can also be business without breakthrough. You are doing business, but you are not seeing any breakthrough. Hallelujah. And a cult tied that is business without breakthrough, you know, needs to be broken in the name of Jesus. 
Because the Bible tells us that God has created us to be a blessing. Hallelujah. That means we must succeed in our businesses. We must succeed in everything that we venture in. A cult tied. The Bible says the cult was tied there. As long as it's tied there, it can't do anything. A cult tied is results in blessing without joy. In other words, you can even be getting results you know, in blessing, but you are not happy. There are some people, they have the car, they are not happy. There are some people, they have the husband, they are not happy. There are some people, even they have the children, they are not happy. There are some people, it doesn't matter what you do to them, they are still not happy. There is no need wasting your time. A cult tied. Somebody say a cult tied. They are cult tied until they are untied. Nothing is going to happen. Hallelujah. A cult tied is also a womb that is tied without fruitfulness. A cult tied is prayer which the answer has been hindered. The Bible says in the book of Daniel 10, 12 to verses 13, it says, Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before the Lord, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me for 21 days. Hallelujah. That is a call tide where prayer, eh, which should have been answered, is being hindered. When things like that are taking place, you don't just sit down and just, you know, be quiet and just say, well, it will happen. There are some certain things if you don't take it aggressively, if you don't keep on praying. They say for 21 days, Daniel did not stop until he saw what he was looking for. He did not give up. Some people, they will come from one night's vigil and because they didn't get any prayer, they stopped going to vigil. They will come from one prayer meeting because they didn't get it, they will stop. Some of the things you are looking for, you don't even know what is hindering the answer. You don't give up because you just prayed one day. You don't give up because of one month. You don't give up because of six months. Some of us, our issue is not a six months matter. Our issue could be a ten years issue. Our issue could be a five years issue. Until you have not seen the manifestation, you do not give up. A call tide is prayer which the answer has been hindered. And then you start blaming. Is the church. Eh, this church, they are not answering. God is not answering my prayer here. Let me go to another church. You keep on going, 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 going. And you think that it is the institution not knowing that it is a cult tied matter. Am I talking to somebody in this place? It may not be easy, but God is able to make all things come to fruition in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. A donkey tied means that it has been hindered. It has been stopped. That means you cannot achieve much. It was limited. It was tied up. I remember some of us, how we were when we started. Definitely, we were not on this level. Definitely, we were not seeing what we are seeing today. Definitely, we did not know what we know today. A destiny tied. But it came a day where some of us got so desperate and we said, no, God is not a tying God. God is a God that unties. And whatever has been tied in our life that is making us not to, you know, not to succeed, we break that in the place of prayer. We break that in the place of fasting. We break that in our mind. We break that in our heart. We break that in our mindset in the name of Jesus. Because we know that we serve a good God. We serve a faithful God whose plans are good for us. Plans to prosper us. Plans to take us from glory to glory. And it doesn't matter how we start. It doesn't matter how our past may be. Some people keep looking at our past. They keep pointing a finger at our past. They are not looking at the us today. They are not looking at what God can do for us tomorrow. And they keep looking. Just like they were saying, is that not Jesus, the carpenter's son? Is that not him whose father is Joseph? Just a mere carpenter. And they are not looking at the anointing. They are not looking at the grace. They are not looking that when God gets ready, nobody can stop it. When God gets ready, nothing Nothing can stop the entry to Jerusalem. Nothing can stop the purpose of God. Nothing can stop the cross next week. Nothing can stop the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nothing can stop God's plan when he has a plan for somebody. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Am I talking to somebody in this place? Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 